copyright, you automatically have a copyright, a legal copyright in whatever you're, you're creating immediately when you create it. And that, that's just by law. Registration is just basically uh, documenting what you own. So it's not as urgent to immediately go register the copyright. But contracts are usually the things that, that define that you own the copyright. So if, if you have a contract that says it's a work for hire, and you're doing something for for a producer, then you don't own that work. You're not the author. The, the, you're just an employee doing the work for for the producer. But if there's no contract, then technically it's you own it. And if they, and sometimes you can turn around on people who are trying to be shady and not using paperwork. You know, it, probably um, the artist you're talking about. He probably his lawyer is probably making the argument over well, there is no no paperwork, so he owns the copyrights and. That's that's powerful, but you know a lot of people who are trying to be slick don't understand that. Mm -hmm. So, so copyright, you own the copyright as soon as you write something, as soon as you record something, as soon as uh, whatever you're creating, if you're creating uh, poems, you automatically own the copyright. Uh, probably when you when you publish it, when you're getting ready to release the the music, that's when you want to register with the copyright office, and um, and that gives you a date to it. It says you can backdate and say when did you create it. So if you Register it in 2010, but you wrote it in 2009. You can put 2009 on, on the registration. So that, that's uh, and it's cheap. I mean, like 35 dollars if you do it yourself. So it's it's not something that you just want to like glaze over. It's something you want to do. Mm -hmm. now, split sheets tie into that. Basically. Yeah. So split sheets. I think every producer should have a binder next to his uh, keyboard. It should just be filled with split sheets. Mm hmm. As soon as you create the record, fill out the split sheet. It's not hard. You guys all save every song under a title. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, you can go, it'll be 8,000 songs. You're like, oh yeah, which CSAC, I don't know which one that is. And you can go right to it because you know the song, you know how you did it. Literally, especially if you're in there with someone else. Um, just, it's simple. You know what I mean? You can download them online and type in split sheet template. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say much. Name. Performer right organization. If you're not signed up to a performing rights organization, you should sign up with one of them before the end of this weekend. Mm -hmm. Period. There's only one way to collect your money. <laughs> not some ways. Not maybe. You can. We can talk all this licensing and TV and film. If you have not signed up with CSAC, ASCAP, or BMI, then stop making music. Mm. You're not gonna collect no royalties. Yeah. Period. They're not chasing you down to give you your money when I can put it in the bank and make some in, some investment money off of it. So, you know, no. Um, and sound exchange, too. That is uh, another, yeah. another stream of income nobody seems to know about, but they're out there everywhere. <laughs> sound, sound exchange. exchange. Sound exchange. They, they give out uh, record royalties when they're playing on satellite or the internet or all the music that you're hearing streaming. They, they collect that. They, yeah, they, they like the digital stuff, whereas digital. the PROs is the actual performance of the record. Can you do both? Because I know you can't be a part of BMI and ASCAP and Well, CSAC. technically you can, oh. just not as a composer. As a writer, you can only be signed up to one. If you're a publisher, if you're a producer, I would get a publishing company with all of them. All of them. Yes. As a publisher. That's the greatest trick you know. As a publisher. If, so say... You just start with ASCAP. You can you can have as many publishing companies as you want. You open sixty publishing companies if you want to. This one, this publishing company does all TV stuff. This publishing company does all urban music. This publishing company does rock music. This one, you set them all up. As a writer, however, you are mandated to just one for a certain period of time. This is true. But if you back to the split sheet situation, there's fifty. I mean, the, the record is a hundred percent. 50 side is composition, 50 side is publishing. So um, if there's five writers, five writers got to split up that 50. On the other end, the publishing has the percentages have to match up. The percentages does, not the ownership. So say if you're a producer and a songwriter and the producer is releasing the record, um, the songwriter will get 50% of the composing and then the publisher, I mean the producer can take the rest of the 50% of the publishing. Or you guys do 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. However it is, it's 50 and 50 on the both sides. If you got nine writers over here, but it's only one publisher, then you just have to keep, one publisher can publish all that, but the percentages all have to match. 
So it gets kind of tricky. The point is both sides have to be even. So we're back to like the um, mm -hmm. account accounting type deal mm -hmm. where the, the ledgers have to match. Right. Well, that's but, why you need a sheet. It's because you can't just do it in your head all the time. Especially sometimes. if you have like the five and six writers. So some people aren't going to get, I mean, if you just went and added, like, well, you can't keep all your publishing. That's something too. People try and tell you you can't. Um, yeah. Like that all the time. Yeah, we're so, kept yeah, there is no publishing um, at Fox, um, which is where a lot of our my disagreement. I'm pro artist, clearly, and pro you know pro creative. And originally they were given you know you got to we'll pay you for we don't pay you for the track, but then you got to keep your publishing and your copyright, so you make the royalties on the back end, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know then the fun time lawyer comes in and says no we're keeping all the publishing and now you just get to keep the composer you know the composer share so now they're both making you know Fox is making money every time you pay for it then it got to the point where we're just going to do a music buyout and that's when I just couldn't deal yeah, um, I'm you know I, I'm going to give you five hundred dollars just because you know what I'm saying you're not um, Scott Schreer which who's the number one producer of all television he did the NFL theme like the Wheel of Fortune theme um, so I'm gonna give you $500, but I'm gonna exploit your record like crazy and make money off of it. And all you got was $500 and to say that's your record on TV. You know, so um, you definitely have to pay attention to that split sheet um, on, the, on the major end, but that all comes in that with the bigger contract. But on the ground level, have a, just a binder, print out 50, back and front, um, and just talk about it right then and there. It, 